Hi, I'm Robert Byrne from the Deutsches Herz Centrum in Munich and we're here at the largest cardiology meeting in the world, the ESC Congress this year in Paris, France. I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Val Jamili from Ferrara who's just presented some very interesting findings from the Prodigy randomized trial. Welcome. Thank you so much, Robert. Um, this is of course an issue that has uh, attracted a lot of attention in the last uh, number of years since the identification of delayed arterial healing yeah. after drug eluting stents. Can you give us a little bit more about, about the background and to the design that you used uh, in the Prodigy trial? Yeah, sure. I'm delighted to do so. Well, the background behind the study is very simple. There is a huge uncertainty behind the optimal duration of the APT, dual antiplatelet therapy, after stenting, in particular after dry eluting stenting, of course. And so with that respect, we wanted to test two different duration, one very short, six months, and one uh, probably very long, which is 24 months, which was for us at least a proxy for lifetime indication for the APT. And so we randomized a whole camera patient population undergoing PCI to, at the beginning, four different stand types, uh, namely three different DS and also a quarter to patient to bare metal stand, and then at 30 days, eligible patient, which means alive patients, of course, got randomized to six versus 24 months duration of the APT. Okay, very interesting. So nice to have a bare metal stent control arm because, yeah. of course, the issue of dual antiplatelet therapy duration is not just an issue in DES, but also uh, somewhat of an open question from bare metal stent. Yeah, I think it's a great comment indeed. The evidence we have in favor of prolonged DAPT is coming from the bare metal stent era because the most convincing data are coming from Credo and Cure, and that was 100% based on bare metal stent. And, uh, in Interestingly, we have no randomized data today on top of DES apart from one or two studies from Korea, I should say, that are not favoring the option of prolonging the APT. So that is an addition of these two. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what did you find? What were the uh, main findings of uh, your study? So the primary point of our investigation was death MI and CVA up to two years. And the hypothesis that drove the whole assumption is that the 24 month DBT was supposed to be superior to six months. Mm. We actually failed to meet that primary endpoint because there was a almost identical event rate at two years follow up 10.0% in the short, 10.1% event rate in the long term DBT group, and the final p value was 0.91, so a completely null finding. Okay. With respect to the secondary endpoint, there was also a difference with respect to all ischemic endpoints, so uh, death, death or MI, death or MI and CVA, or even death, MI and CVA alone. Whereas with respect to the safety endpoint, we did see a significant increase of breathing complications disfavoring the prolonged DAPT group. And that was a 50% significant increase irrespective of the breathing mm. classification we, we have mm. chosen. So the results are speaking for a null finding in terms of efficacy, but a significant increase in the hazard of patient taking a long DAPT. Interesting. Um, so I know that you also employed a, a randomization to different types of drug eluting stent, perhaps on the assumption that drug eluting stents associated with different degrees of late luminal loss may perhaps be associated with uh, different degrees of uh, adverse events uh, with prolonged dual antiplatelet therapy. Is there any indication uh, of differences between the different types of drug eluting stents? So I think it's a very important point. And the reason why we at the beginning randomized patients to different uh, stents is because first we wanted to ensure a perfectly balanced distribution of stand types between the two stand groups as stand safety has been shown many times to differ. Yeah. And so our main reason to randomize patients was to be sure that the stand were perfectly identical. Then the selection of which sort of stand types has been driven as you are saying by the degree of late loss inhibition from no late loss inhibition the bare metal stand to very high loss inhibition in science V uh, patients and also we wanted to have intermediate steps moderate inhibition with taxus and maybe less than moderate with Endeavor Sprint. And also the other reason why we have selected these stents is because we wanted to have both first and second generation DS. Yeah. Now for the time being, we have not analyzed data uh, looking specifically to each stent type, but we have cut the sample size into bare metal stent versus dry gluting stent. And with respect to this difference, there was absolutely no heterogeneity. So the results were completely uh, consistent across stent types. Okay. So an interesting message then, uh, no evidence of benefit with 24 months as against six months of dual antiplatelet therapy yeah. after stenting uh, and an increase in uh, bleeding events yeah. out to 24 months. That's so exactly where does this leave us? I mean, we've seen in a number of studies now, if we look at um, uh, Zest Late and Real Late, and we've also seen some uh, data from the Excellent trial, and 
I think we all agree that delayed arterial healing after drug eluting stents is a problem. However, it doesn't seem to be solved by merely offering protracted courses of dual antiplatelet therapy. Is that the way you see things? I think so, yeah, I agree with you. I think we, I'm not in the position to say you should not prolong DAPT beyond six months in no patients. I think that's remain an option in patients who are very high risk for ischemic event and also very low risk for bleeding events, but that cannot be recommended as a default strategy. That's what I believe is the take home message here. Okay, well, that's a, a nice point on which to finish, and uh, I'd like to thank you for coming here today, and congratulations on uh, a very nice study. Thank you so much.